I sat down and I thought about everything that I was feeling and none of it was mine. None of the problems were my problems, but because the person that I am, I take on the world's problems and I feel like I'm literally losing it. I'm losing my spark. I'm losing my ability to speak. I'm losing, um, you know, the, my capability of being able to handle situations. And now I'm like, I'm so afraid of the person I'm becoming because I'm not numb, but I'm in a sense guarded with like, hold on. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Have you ever talked to someone and you're like, yo, I don't want feedback. I just want to be hurt in this situation. I feel like we have to do that more often. I need to just find the little things that I do for myself that give me that um, that that fuel that make me feel better because again, my cup is empty. Good, everybody. Welcome back to the Dima Podcast. It's Neela. And it is Adis. What's up, family? What's up, man? How are you? It's a heavy, heavy week, a heavy month. But again, like you said earlier in the free brief, alhamdulillah for everything. Alhamdulillah for all of it. it basically means thank God still. Like, we're grateful. We're grateful. I want to I wanna state that I'm grateful. I'm so filled with gratitude. I have been raised, always taught to look at everything beneath me, everything that is happening that is not happening to me. I've always been, it's in, been instilled in me to sh surface my gratitude in a sense where I'm very, very familiar with the fact that there are people with far worse situations and going through way worse things than I am, despite how I feel. And I don't want to take away from how I feel because it is important to express yourself. Something that weigh ha that may weigh so heavy on me can be so light to others or something that like can be life threatening, life-changing to someone else may be so mediocre to me. But the point is how you feel is important and you need to recognize those feelings. So I just feel like I want to surface this conversation by saying that I am grateful and I don't want to feel like I'm complaining. But I am so mentally exhausted to the point where I'm feeling the fatigue in all aspects of my life. And I was sitting down, I was actually talking to your dad and I was like, you know, I sat down and I thought about everything that I was feeling and none of it was mine. None of the problems were my problems, but because the person that I am, I take on the world's problems and I feel like I'm literally losing it. I'm losing my spark. I'm losing my ability to speak. I'm losing, um, you know, the, my capability of being able to handle situations. And now I'm like, I'm so afraid of the person I'm becoming because I'm not numb, but I'm in a sense guarded with like, hold on. No, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't, I, I have to protect what I invite into my life in this moment. I'm not saying that this is who I've become. I'm saying that I am so sen sensitive right now that I really, really need a minute. And um, I catch myself taking deep breaths again. And I know when I get in this space, I've been here before, you know, when my anxiety through the roof and my heart pal is literally palpitating. And I know what I have to do. I need to just find the little things that I do for myself that give me that, um, that, that fuel that make me feel better. Because again, my cup is empty yet. People are pouring if that makes sense, you know, but my cup is empty. Like I don't have anything to give. So it's a real, like we go through these things and it's important to be honest about it because right now I'm not myself. I'm not able to perform. I'm not able to communicate. I'm not able to think and it's fine. Like you just have to be aware of it and then take little steps towards getting better. But it's a lot. It's a lot. And it's like, I don't have time for your problems. I'm sorry. Do you think it's a culmination of like multiple things and like rather than just like one singular thing that's just like bringing you down? Because yeah. like, are you able to compartmentalize? Like, let's say you're going through one traumatic or someone else's traumatic, you know, situation. Are you able if you were able to go through that, knowing that it's like severe um, is it easier for you? But when there's like multiple things from multiple directions and you're lost on like what you're able to balance first or what comes first and what you're supposed to do, is that when you sort of feel like loss and like, I just don't want to deal or I can't, I don't have the aptitude to deal with this right now. I feel like at one point when all of your light check engine lights are on in the car, the car is not going to drive anymore. So it's like, yeah, you do come to a place where it's like, even if your car, 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 <laughs> I can't talk, you know, like even if you're like 
finding ways to place the issues in different areas where you can handle them one at a time. Eventually, it piles up. Or like a small patch. On right. Like a- you're just like handling one thing, you're turning that off, but then it still exists, but then you're kind of like turning to something else, and then you're like, you know, all of a sudden, even your outlets become issues, and it's like, oh, God, like, where do I go from here? But I've always been someone who has had the ability to just execute, and when things happen, I know that you're similar When things happen, I am able to remove my emotions and kind of think uh, in a practical level, uh, logical level level even. And like I could do the research, I could step in, I could have the difficult conversations and I could handle it. But then eventually I feel like two weeks later, it'll hit me and I'll get sick, like physically sick. And just last weekend, a few days ago, it was like a Saturday and I, I felt like I couldn't lift an arm like I couldn't lift my arms I couldn't lift my legs as if I had just ran a marathon or I like literally literally got hit by a car you know and Uh yeah and so I think I want people to understand it's like when it gets that bad dude you're mentally physically checked out because you're you're you're, it's like it cannot run anymore you know like it's kind of like you said everything does catch up to you it may be a, a combination of everything now catching up I mean we've seen this you know like something may happen to you physically where something stops working And it could just be like, how did that happen? But it could be a combination of the past years all catching up to our bodies. And so I feel like that's how I'm feeling more so just like, oh, my God, I'm like fatigued in a sense where my body is now telling me something. So I need to kind of take a step back. Um, And again, the reality is that it doesn't even have to do with the problems that are coming my way. I know that the people that are dumping on me are not intentionally dumping on me. I've created that environment for myself. I've, I think my purpose in this life is to be that person for everybody. And I'm, I love to, I will, I would never not be, but I have to remember, um, I need to draw some sort of boundaries to an extent so that I can be that person. And part of that looks like, again, disassociating, take a step, taking a step back and doing the little things for myself one or two hours a day so that I can be that person for others. And it just, it is what it is. This is the reality. I am that person and I don't want to change that. I just need a minute. I was just going to say, I think the reason that you're feeling this way is because you're an anchor for like all of your friends and family. You are the person that in everyone's mind has it figured out and like you are the person to talk to that has like emotional intelligence to be there the the same person because i'm not going to go to someone that's like not going to give me the the like best advice in that certain situation right or wrong right like you're not the type of person to give me what i want to hear or just me right so that's why like i turn to you because you're like an anchor in my life or a pillar in my life that i can always turn to and i know will give me this unbiased opinion and i feel like everybody kind of dumps and dumps and you know when they say people like trauma dump on you and stuff like that and then you're being pulled in several different directions you're also juggling your life experiences your you know you know what sucks i feel like my life is on complete hold right now and, and the worst part about being in this type of situation is that I'm neglecting myself completely. And that's when it hurts my feelings because it's like people will come dump and move on. I'll give them my two cents. I'll be there. I'll provide what I can. And then they'll move forward. And they're, you know, for whatever, whatever that looks like for them. But I think people who are of similar nature like myself, and you're the same way. People dump on you too. We are those anchors in our family, right? A lot of us are. There's a few of us. So it's not all of us, but there are a few of us. Um, And I know you feel this way. It's like, we will be there. You can count on us. But it's so sad how I feel at the end of the night. I feel so lonely. And I I have everyone, but I feel so lonely. I was just going to ask, are you the type of person to talk about how you're feeling and your emotions? I Like, in all honesty, like, we do it on the podcast and we talk to our audience and stuff. And you and I talk about a lot of things. But... I do genuinely feel like you're this very strong, independent queen. You feel me? <laughs> that uh, I don't know. Like, do you express yourself in like your darkest, deepest moments of life where like your emotional um, barrier is dropped and you just go and you vent about everything to someone? I do. I do. You yeah, do? I have. I have. I have, thankfully, I have my sisters for that. I have Tam for like that. Like, your problems. Yeah, yeah, I do, I okay. do. And But but when I explain my problems, I'm talking about other people's problems because I'm just expressing how, like, their energies. I had a realization last night, though, 
and uh, it had to do with um, kind of why I am the way I am. I've, I I think I think, and I'm not self diagnosing, but I, I think that I um, I'm avoidant, dismissive, and in a sense where it's like I do that to protect myself. I'm avoidant, dismissive when it comes to vulnerability. I have the hardest time being vulnerable. This is a known thing. It's been an issue in every relationship I've had. It's the reason why I can't be in a relationship. It's I cannot express myself. And I try, I, I came from a very amazing, healthy upbringing. You know, I had an amazing father, but I had an issue with rejection. I had an issue with asking for permission for things because I was more so afraid of him saying no. And it wasn't because my dad was just an evil person. I respected him so much that I didn't want to put him in a position to say no to me, which is why I'd rather not say how I really feel or do things that I really want because I'm trying to protect myself from how it'll feel if it's rejected, which is why in relationships, many men will say, oh, you're so like laid back. You get over things so quick. You don't hold grudges. That's not a healthy thing because in relationships, I held back so much of how I really felt because I didn't want to be vulnerable and express myself in fear of how that person would take it. We talked about this before. And that's like a dismissive avoidant thing that I, I have. And the only people I am vulnerable with are, I mean, you're one of them, but also it's like my, or it's like Tam, my sister Mo, off. like I can't express, my, they know my real, real self. And like here, I'll be very, very honest and speak my truth. But, you know, to an extent, there's still a part of me that I'll really no one knows. Um, but I've had that realization. I'm like, damn. And so now I'm real, I'm taking a lot of ownership on how I am and it's helping me. It's helping me because reality is I'm putting myself in the situation to feel this way. I am in control. I feel the exact same way. I'm avoidant, dismissive, or, you know, with a lot of things that are, you know, um, that are heavy, right? But also it's like that fear of rejection and that fear and that hurt, right? It doesn't stop after that, uh, the, the when the conversation starts with that close person. Like sometimes you, have you ever talked to someone and you're like, yo, I don't want feedback. I just want to be heard in this situation. I feel like we have to do that more often. Like even if it's your closest person like me or Tam or Mo or moms or whoever, sometimes it's like really important because like when you, when you explain something to someone and they're giving you feedback based on their own perception and stuff, that's another layer and another sort of like, like confuse, confusing added. Like I don't re I just want to explain and feel heard in this situation and then we'll deal with the rest. You so know? then you maybe need to shrink. You tell that stuff to the people who care the most about mm -hmm. you. We can't help ourselves but to not give you that. At least mm -hmm. know like we care about, it comes from a very, very positive intention. But it also comes from their understanding of the situation. Exactly, it'll Based always on their be... own circumstances, based on, we've talked about yeah. it before too, right? Like you talk to a person who has gone through uh, 10 different relationships, right? And it's been messed up and you talk to the person that's been in one and it's been healthy and fruitful and amazing they're going to give you two completely different sides of you know the argument so it's like i think that's why sometimes like when you are at your point of exhaustion where you have your cup is so empty right in order for you to be of aid and to actually be the nila and the anchor to everybody else sometimes you do need that time to hit the pause on all of people's drama, all of people's, you know, trauma and stuff. Because like, if you're running on empty and E, there's nothing that you can provide to that person anymore because you're a lot, like you can't really function properly. You're and not. I, I see myself not being able to be as strong for others. Like I know how I am at my best when I'm able to ta like really take care of people and, and provide them the best advice in my opinion. Right. And, and give them guidance and just listen and I also know when it's not my best work because I know that I'm not um, functioning at the best of my ability because my my cup is so empty. And when I start to signal those, I know that it's I'm not at the, I'm not in a good headspace. Headspace is low, like it's not in a healthy place. And um, I just have to kind of take a step back. And the reality is, we've been here before. There are so many episodes in which I've always talked about. You've talked about, dude. I'm kind of hitting a wall. I'm hitting rock bottom. And I know getting out of this this current phase that I'm in is going to be so beautiful. I've seen it, you know, like it's stronger, better than ever, but it is exhausting. And I want to normalize this, uh, this notion of, um, feeling so helpless and hopeless and weak, 
you know, and, and accepting it and also understanding that it is something that is in our own control. We are choosing the environment we are in. We are choosing the people in our lives, which is why now I'm choosing the energies I'm inviting into my life. The, the situations that are going on in others' lives and what I'm picking and choosing to listen to and what not to listen to because I have to protect myself to an extent because like I said, at the end of all of it, when I go to sleep, I'm so lonely. I feel so, so burnt out and I wake up gasping for air because my anxiety's through the roof and I'm just like, dude, uh, this is not healthy for me. Draw some boundaries. Draw some boundaries, you know, and it, you have to be aware of that. You have to be aware of what it's doing to you. It could also be a demon. No, I've felt that before. This time, it's not that. <laughs> I know it. what that feels like. <laughs> no, but I get it's it. Funny. But I think a lot of people that deal with anxiety and stuff, it'll hit you at any moment, whether you're sleeping or you're not sleeping, and it's a very heavy pressure on your chest. Yeah. Like, you don't know, you know, how to get over it. It's like this weird, daunting feeling that you just can't shake, and it's a lot. I hate anxiety i've had it since i was a child i've had it since i was so young because you can't let it, it, it it's just there it's whether you're at your, work right whether you're at the gym whether it never really goes away today and it comes out of nowhere yeah it's like an episode today i had heart palpitation. i don't know if you it's the scariest feeling because it feels like your heart like goes it, it either like takes a big beat or, or it skips a beat i don't know which one it is but and then it happens and your whole body kind of has like a shock moment Sometimes it's kind of back to back um, or it'll just happen once. And I literally have to pause and be like, okay, am I having a heart attack? I'm not, you know, but like I hate that feeling. It's so uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. And then I ha I literally put my hand on my chest and I feel my heart rate and I'm like, okay, yeah. But I'm I'm so aware of anxiety now. I have mechanisms in place that have like, like breath work that teaches me. Because when I was really, really young, I had to go to like cognitive therapy because my anxiety got so bad in school, you know, naturally. Like I'd be sitting and my heart would just start racing and then now that I know how to handle it and what it is, essentially it stems from just like a traumatic feeling or an emotion that um, your body was once aware of and it thinks it's in that place again. You just have to talk yourself through it. You're not there. You're literally sitting at work at your on your desk like it's not it's not that. Um, but it's crazy, you know, the mind over matter part. It's what – but the problem with that stuff is it becomes physical and then you wake up on a Saturday morning and you're like, dude, did I lift like 30s last night? Like I can't lift my arm. I, mean, I haven't been to the gym in a minute. Like what happened? That is like adrenal fatigue, literally. It's crazy. I feel like that's why I you got to handle every single interaction and people in your life with so much grace because you just don't know what people are going through. Like the person that has it all figured out, like Neela's at her desk working hard, balancing this, this, and this. And on the outside, it's like smiles and happiness and stuff like that. But on the inside, you're battling all this anxiety and stuff like that. So, like, I always think about that. I always, when I see people walk by, I'm like, I wonder what that person is going through in their life or what's going good in their life. What are things they're grateful about? What are things that are troubling them? Because every single person deals with problems and stuff. So it reminds me of that whole mental health thing and everyone de dealing with their own levels of like mental health, whether it being low or high or feeling good or feeling un unhappy, et cetera. And just dealing with all of that with grace and treating yourself, um, you know, good, right? Because if you're not in a good headspace, there's just nothing, you know, nothing good will come from that. You know what I mean? It's That's just, a really good point. And like, how do you even attack that if you don't have the tools to be able to attack it? Like, I don't, yeah. I was talking to my cousin Sadaf about this, right? And just the tools that you use in order for you to like get over like a, a dark period in your life or something that's going wrong and stuff like that. And I felt like I had all the answers and the answers I had was like as a guy in society and as a man, it's just like, I've seen it with my dad, right? And he came from a third world country, came here, worked hard, whatever. It didn't matter if he was sad, happy, whatever he was feeling, he just had to wake up and go and provide. Wake up, work hard, provide, right? So it's like, that's my understanding of just like mental health. But like the other day, I was going through something that I felt like my world was crashing down. And I was also battling like a health scare with a family member, like dealing with my own stuff, like uh, slipping up with like uh, the podcast and like um, this goal that you and I have that we were talking about and stuff like that, like outside of the podcast stuff and like it all going on pause and me knowing that like this is slipping up from behind me again, which happens, right? We all go through those ups and downs of like things effing up. I'm going through this again. It feels like my life is falling apart with this. And then also like I'm dealing with a family member that's going through this and it all felt like I just wanted to disappear. I wanted to just 
hit the checkout, clock out for lunch, right? And just disappear, turn off my phone. And there was a period where like you text me saying like, yo, good, yo, are you good? And I looked and I always respond to you. The minute I see I missed your call, I'm like right there, right? Or whatever, I just, I couldn't. And I knew you weren't. That's why I was concerned. And here you I was I was carrying your I was carrying your weight. Yeah. But then what's crazy is a few days later you texted me, right? Yeah. And you said we had been talking about this thing and you're like, yo, I got I can't I have one, right? And you were in the and I didn't respond. Yeah. I like saw it and I wanted to be in the best headspace yeah. to respond to you to give yeah. you that attention. I didn't even know what to I say. I get it. I get and it. And I was like, no, I'm going to talk to him when I see him. Yeah. He deserves the best version of me yeah. for that, for that, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, because it's like we have to disassociate to an extent because yeah. we're going through the same family. Then there, there's that there. And then there's yeah. that there. And there's that there. And then I'm like, it just, it's fine. You know, yeah. it's fine. It is what it is. And I am also very much okay with like, how I'm acting, my behaviors, if it looks some type of way to someone, I'm I'm so okay with how I look right now to others. If you want to call me, you know, whatever, like I'm not responding or I'm careless or whatever, if that's how they think, I'm okay with how being whatever victim, whatever person, whatever, and anyone else's narrative right now, I'm only focused on myself. Because people who know you know you, they know it's not personal, but it's just like, yo, you need a moment. And I feel you, like clock out. Where's the clock out? Where's the clock out button, bro? I'm taking a 30. <laughs> I need a 30, please. Yeah, I feel you. Meals. I feel you. I mean, it's something that we all have to go through. It's but like, it'll pass. It'll yeah. pass. And it, it always does. And it gets better. You just have to be nicer to yourself. Be nicer to yourself. Give yourself the space, bro. Give yourself. We are giving everyone the space. Are you, are you giving yourself the space? No, we're not. And that's why I had that realization. And now I'm like doing little things and it'll get better. Insane meals. Inshallah. Yeah. Where can they find us? <laughs> Meditating. <laughs> Maybe doing At a, a puzzle. Park. At doing a park a puzzle. doing a puzzle. <laughs> A post with 100,000 pieces. Uh, YouTube.com slash The Dima Podcast. TDP. We out. We out.